Hello everyone and welcome to Lent Challenge, week one. You think as men think. of the orangutan it's not there for any other uh, reason apart from that I, I thought that it was a nice picture so I hope you like it well we've had a very good discussion over this last week since the Lent challenge began and three particular questions seem to have arisen out of that conversation that I'd like to address and give my point of view on today, not to answer those questions, but just to give my own particular point of view and bring those questions together. And I think we can do that really in one sentence or paragraph. The three uh, questions are these, just to refresh your memory. The first one is, how do we live up to the Sermon on the Mount? How do we become Christ-like? And the third question is, how do we enter through the narrow gate or narrow door? I think we can answer those questions, as I said, by one sentence or one paragraph that goes something like this. It's through the Holy Spirit working in us, the Holy Spirit that we were sealed with in our baptism, it's through that Holy Spirit that we don't live up to, we don't have to live up to the Sermon on the Mount, we live into the Sermon on the Mount by entering through the narrow door and becoming Christ-like. That's my uh, answer, <laughs> if there is an answer to the question, uh, my point of view, and I'm going to explain a little bit more about that, uh, about what I mean by that, about uh, becoming Christ-like and Enter and, and uh, entering into the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, entering through the narrow gate and living into the Sermon on the Mount, I should say. Albert Einstein is reputed to have said that uh, you don't use the same thinking uh, that got you into a problem to get out of it. You don't use the same thinking that created a problem uh, to get out of, about to solve the problem. If you see it, well, I may not. You don't solve a problem by using the same thinking that created the problem. To put it another way, and if you can get this one straight, is that you don't get from where you are to where you want to be by using the same thinking that got you from where you were to where you are now. I hope you follow that. Well, actually, 2,000 years ago, there was a guy who said something similar, and he said something like this. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemy. Wow, that's a radical change in thinking. He also said, you have heard that it was said, do not commit murder and don't be angry. Let me just read what it, it says. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. Well, wow, there again, that's a change in thinking. A radical change in thinking, of course, those are words that we've been reading since the beginning of the Lent Challenge, words of Jesus, words of God. Now, what I think uh, I mean by living into the Sermon on the Mount and becoming Christ-like and entering through the narrow gate is actually beginning to think like God thinks. You remember that Jesus was telling the disciples that he would uh, be put to death and that after three days he would rise again. And St. Peter took objection to this, that, to, to Jesus saying that he was going to be killed, he was going to be crucified. 
and uh, he rebu rebuked Jesus. But then Jesus turned and rebuked Peter. He said, get behind me, Satan. You think as men think, not as God thinks. So what did he mean? What did Jesus mean by that? Well, let me put it this way. When he was about 12 years old, we read that Jesus was in the temple after the family had been visiting Jerusalem for the festival. Um, Joseph and Mary noticed one part of the journey that Jesus wasn't with them. Uh, and they went herring back to Jerusalem and found Jesus in the temple, uh, talking to the scribes and the Pharisees about God. And he said to them, uh, he was wondering, Jesus was wondering why his mother and father were getting upset. And he said, do you not realise that I've got to be about my father's business? So he was learning about God, getting information, gathering knowledge about God. But then later in his life, when he became an adult, we meet him in the wilderness. And it was the, uh, uh, the reading about that is the reading that we had yesterday for the first Sunday in Lent about Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. It's a sort of controlling reading for the whole of Lent. It sets the scene for the whole of Lent, Jesus' temptation. But what I think, part of what I think that is all about is it's Jesus, not simply being under a time of trial, but Jesus actually practising the way that God thinks. He learned in his youth about how God thinks from the scribes and the Pharisees. But there he was in his alone time, a long alone time, 40 days and 40 nights were uh, we're told that it was, which is biblical for a long time. He spent a long time alone practicing how God thinks. It's all right knowing how God thinks, but we need to, if we're going to get in the way of how God thinks, we need to practice it, just like we might have to practice a musical instrument to become accomplished in it, or learning how to drive a car. We've got to actually to learn how God thinks. We don't automatically do it, as we saw in Peter. And especially in that moment of being under pressure, Peter automatically thought in a human way and not in God's way. And Jesus told him off for it. So we see Jesus here in his humanity, as it were, in the wilderness, practicing, thinking how God thinks. And we have that uh, image of the devil coming tempting him in various ways tempting to think as a human being would think but Jesus is there in a sense rebuking Satan quoting God's word to him God's word being how God thinks and so in doing that Jesus is practicing how God thinks so that it becomes his own way of thinking so that when he comes out of that uh, alone time, accomplished in the way of thinking, he can in introduce the rest of humanity to God's way of thinking, which he does for us almost immediately in the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is God's word to us. It's God's thinking. This whole Sermon on the Mount is how God thinks. And the Holy Spirit, given to, given to us in our baptism, helps us, will help us to think in the way that God thinks. And when we can get into that way of thinking the way that God thinks, then we can begin to live into the Sermon on the Mount rather than live up to it because we can never live up to it but we can live into it that's why Jesus said never told us to be good but he told us to be perfect as our Father in Heaven is perfect it's that that we are practicing that that we're becoming more and more accomplished at uh, is the way in which God thinks and that's how we become Christ-like 
we become more Christ-like by thinking the way that Christ thinks and addressing our everyday life in that Christ-like way. Addressing our everyday life and our everyday situation with God's thinking. And so that's how we become ourselves more Christ-like and that's how we uh, that's how we continue and improve our relationship with God himself by thinking in the way that he thinks. And so that's why the gate is narrow because it's difficult to do at first. When we start to uh, learn a musical instrument, when we start to learn to drive a car, it's difficult at first. We've got that unconscious incompetence if you like or conscious incompetence I can't remember how it goes just offhand we're, we're aware of how difficult it is as we begin to do anything learn a game learn a sport play a musical instrument drive a car learn to use a computer we know how difficult it is right at the very start and that's the narrow gate and there are a few and Jesus says, who managed to enter it because it is so difficult. How many people give up right away? We might only be 5% or 3% of the whole population. We're lucky if it's 10% of the whole population of the world who can who actually do enter that narrow gate. But it's only by practising that we actually get through the narrow gate and continue on that narrow way as Jesus describes it. So I hope you see how those uh, three questions how do we live up to the Sermon on the Mount? How do we become Christ-like? How do we enter through the narrow gate? I hope you see how I've brought all those three together and it, the question, the first question isn't a, a relevant question in a sense, the question should be, how do we live into the Sermon on the Mount? How do we become Christ-like? How do we enter through the narrow gate? It's by practising the way that God thinks, so that it becomes the way that we think. And we do that through the Holy Spirit working within us. I want to just finish with a story that might highlight that. Um, an amusing story, I hope you think. There's a man who decided that he was going to watch the proms uh, at the Albert Hall in London. He'd never been before, uh, never, uh, never seen the proms live. He'd watch it on TV every year, but he decided this year I'm going to go and watch the proms in the Albert Hall in London live. Never actually been to the Albert Hall before, never been to London before. And so he gets on the train, gets off the train, and outside the station, he stands there scratching his head, thinking, which way do I go now? But just passing him is a young woman carrying a violin case. So he thinks, ah, I'll go and ask this young woman. So he stops her in the street and he says, excuse me, miss, how do I get uh, to the Albert Hall? So she uh, stops for a moment and ponders. And then she replies to the man, practice, practice practice and that's what we've got to do with God's thinking as Jesus did in the wilderness we've got to practice 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 and when we do practice when we do enter through that narrow gate when we do more more and more every day gradually become more and more Christ-like it's then that we actually begin to enter and to see the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, opening up before us in the here and now. Thank you for watching. Please do remember to like and share this video. The more you like it, the more you share it, the better, because the Facebook algorithm warms, as it were, to likes and shares. So it's more likely to put the video up in its rankings. The more likes and shares a video has, the more the further it goes up in its rankings and it spreads in far and wide. So please do like and share. Even if you didn't like, even if you didn't like this video, someone else might. Inevitably, there will be those who don't like it. 
but inevitably there will be th those who do. So please like and share as much as you can. So until next time, thank you very much. See you again. Bye.